Okay, hi everyone. So we're going to solve the exercises from 9 to 16 of chapter, chapter 1, which is about 10 principles of economics, which is the book of Gregory Mankiw, Principles of Economics. So the point says, your roommate is better cook than you are, but you can clean more quickly than your roommate can. If your roommate did all of the cooking and you did all of the cleaning, would your chores take you more or less time than if you divided each task evenly? Give a similar example of how specialization and train trait can make two countries better off. So the point is when the chores would first the, the chores would take less time. Why? Because uh, each one, so the roommate and I, uh, we are going to specialize in why we can do best. In this case, the roommate, which is going to cook, which is better than me, and I can do the cleaning because I'm better than him. So it would be like uh, uh, there is a uh, saving of time. What about if we divide the task? So in this case, I would cook and he would do the cleaning, but maybe in a half way. So it would increase the time used for completing, completing the chores. Why? Because uh, I, I'm going to do something that maybe my roommate, he, he can do like much faster than me. And on the other hand, my roommate, he's going to do the cleaning which is going to he's going to like devote or he's going to spend more time and uh, when we talk about the uh, an example about how specialization and trade came in two countries better off it's just like it came to my mind the case of of joining of a car so we know what is the chain of products, so in this case for example car or maybe computer, a laptop or even other kind of machinery. The in this case in these cases the chain process is not only in one country but but also around the world. So the same the same uh, good it passes the pieces they they pass around the world because in each country they are specialized exclusively in this part so it makes the specialization um, become the, the the countries better off so suppose the United States adopted central planning for its economy uh, and you became the chief planner among the millions of decisions that you need to make for next year and are how many compact discs to produce, what artists to record and who should receive the discs. So the first question is to make this decision intelligently. What information would you need about each of the people in the United States? So first of all, compact discs not too much trendy, I guess. But um, in our case, we suppose that we are still in a high demand as before. So uh, the first point is like as a shift planner, as a central planner, it means that the market economy it doesn't work anymore. So what is the part? So as a central pl planner. I need to know about the preferences to allocate the resources in the best way. So from part of the consumers, I need to know how consumers behave, why why or what they really like about music. Uh, in this case, it can to know I can know what CDs I have to provide to them. And the part of the supply which um, this is the artist and we have to know like how how many cities each artist they have to produce uh, against the demand that they will have 
So if I'm thinking about, I don't know, Justin Bieber, so I must say to him, okay, according to do, to your demand, you have to produce this quantity of CDs. But if I'm talking maybe about Paris Hilton in music, maybe I have to say, okay, you have to produce this little bit less than Justin Bieber, something like that. So I need to know a lot about the artist, the potential demand, and in the side of the consumers, the preferences. Um, the second point is how would your decisions about CDs affect some of all your other decisions, such as how many CD players to make or cassette tapes to produce? How might how might some of your other decisions about the economy change your views about CDs? So the point is like according to the suppliers, to the artists that they are going to produce, they are going to create music. So I need to provide the resources of cities. So I have to be able to know how many cities I have to produce that are going to be recorded. So in this side, the artists, they are going to be the demand part. And as a central planner, I want to be the supplier of the cities that they are going to record. So if we think about the cassette tapes, they're obsolete, I guess almost 100 percent by now in 2015 but imagine again that we are thinking that they are now still in market so there is a trade-off with production of cassette tapes because there are two similar products so once i'm thinking about the city uh, the city i have to know what is the I, I have to know like for example what is the capacity of cassettes and demand of these products in this case, I, I am not going to overproduce CDs instead of the cassette tapes that they maybe still have demand. So the case could be that maybe I do not produce them correctly. So maybe there's going to be more CDs in the market than the number the market really need. So there would be a trade-off deciding the best solution. And it's important to clarify that in every single market we must save complete we must have complete information to allocate resources. This was what I think, but I think it's kind of subtle in kind of sense, but it's basically the idea that I that you have to arrive. Uh, Explain whether each of the following government activities is motivated by a concern account um, about equity. Sorry, it's not a concern. Uh, concern about equity or a concern about efficiency. So, in the case of efficiency, discuss the type of market failure involved. So the first case is regulating cable TV prices. So from my point of view, I think it's more about efficiency because in these cases we can take a market failure because of monopoly. So maybe we can think about monopoly, one producer, duopoly, two producers, or maybe a legopoly, more than three producers. So in this case, this is a market failure because there is a kind of power market where they can fix higher prices to the market devoted to the absence of, of uh, other like of, comp of competence in general. So in this case, the government uh, they are going to regulate them in order to make the prices more accessible and in order to like attack the market power of, of these providers. So B is providing some poor people with vouchers that can be used to buy food. This is evidently equity because the government tries to compensate the poor people that they don't have the possibility, they don't have the the, the power, um, the acquisition to buy this basic stuff. So I'm going to provide them in order to have some consumption. C. Prohibiting smoking in public spaces. It is more about efficiency. In this case, we are talking about the negative externalities. 
What's that? Is because we people that they are smoking, they're affecting with the smoke to other people around them. That they, they don't deserve uh, receiving this this pollution. So in this case, the government they are regulating, so they are giving a tariff to the smokers. In this case, they disin disincentive. There is not incentive to smoke more. So this is case about efficiency. Breaking up standard oil, which is once owned 90% of all oils refineries into several smaller companies. So um, I must say that it's about efficiency because it could be just the case for one company. So um, I, I'm avoiding this kind of failure, which is kind of monopoly or kind of market power in order to give to smaller companies so it will be efficiency and the last one is imposing higher personal income tax rates on people with higher incomes so I can say that it's about equity the government is trying to capture kind of this piece of the cake to redistribute in a better way to poor people but uh, I can say that even here um, we can talk a little bit about efficiency because when we are making taxes higher, what we are doing at the end, we are disincent, we are making less incentives for people in order to work hard. Why do you work hard or why do you invest in these countries where the taxes are so high? Maybe we are sacrificing efficiency. So this case is a trade-off, is an example. And the last one is this one, uh, instituting laws against driving while intoxicated. So this is about efficiency, because this is again as a smoking case, as an externality, a negative externality, when you're driving intoxicated, maybe you can cause an accident or any harm to someone else who definitely he or she doesn't deserve this accident. So this is a case where the government regulates and try to eliminate this externality, avoiding people to drive intoxicated. Okay, at this point, discuss each of the following statements from the standpoints of equity and efficiency. The first statement says, everyone in society should be guaranteed the best health the best health care possible so we are talking about equity because we are saying that this public service this is going to be the same for everyone in the society the same treat for everyone but at the same time we are sacrificing efficiency because it's not well allocated what does it mean maybe in the part of the medical they don't have incentive to offer even better ser services because they do, don't have they won't be compensated in the same way and on the other case there would be people that they they would like to pay more for having a better service but they cannot because there is no this service so for this reason maybe we can talk about some and there are several countries there are different types of health care there is one base which is provided by the government which is the minimal that you have and you deserve uh, to receive as a patient but there are also like insurance they could be there are not a hospitals private ones that you have to pay more but you will receive a different service so it would be the case how the the market adjust adjust in some way second case when workers are laid off they should be able to collect unemployment benefits until they find a job so there is part of equity because I know that they they have still like uh, things to spend they have to like maintain families and much and like most of the cases so the unemployed people receive some help that's right but there is a point of efficiency because sometimes we know that there is a, there is no incentive to find a job there are several countries as i have heard for example about canada where people they work for two years and they just like quit and afterwards they have one year of uh, 
of unemployment benefit and it's like lifestyle so we are sacrificing we are sacrificing efficient because there are these people there are potential workers that they are not doing anything in the economic view so it will be the case or maybe they are working but uh, or independent staff and at the same time they are receiving the unemployment benefits Chin, in what ways is your standard of living different from what that your parents and grandparents when they were your age? Why have these change changes occur? Again, it's like kind of subtle question. I think I think that everyone can address in different ways, and they can answer the, from the their point of view. So in my case, I, I must say that compared with my parents and grandparents. Uh, it's education basically. I had the possibility to study. I did my ma even my master's degree, and unfortunately, my grandparent he didn't finish high school. Neither my father. So this is definitely a change. So what about healthcare? Maybe my grandparents and parents they didn't have like access to a really great healthcare, but fortunately now uh, I have this possibility. And the public services, maybe even the water, even the roads, they were really different, uh, different like 20, 30 years ago, and the current case even even worse. And but it's so subtle. But um, talking about the chapter uh, related with the temperance, positive economics, we can talk about the increasing of production. We know that one of the principles. Of the of the chapter, it says about the um, the country's standard of living depends on its ability to produce goods and services. And we know that, for example, in my case, Colombia, the GDP has grown has grown um, uh, has grown like several times during the last 50 periods like in general all the countries so we can say that is devoted for the increasing of production of my country and in war in general uh, the 14th case is post Americans decide to save more of their incomes if banks lend this extra saving to businesses which is the funds to build uh, which use the funds to build new factories how might this lead to faster growth in productivity who do you suppose benefits from higher productivity is society getting a free lunch so the first question how might lead a fa faster growth in productivity so if we suppose there is a possibility still there is still space for uh, increasing productivity uh, in in one specific mar market, so we can say there is a possibility to grow the economy. So we conclude that it would lead a faster growth because there will be a possibility of creating more services and more uh, goods. Maybe be investment in innovation. There will be like uh, a faster growth. So who do you suppose benefits from higher productivity when there is a faster growth, as the ten principle says? We'll, we'll have like more products and services in the economy so as a conclusion people will have more possibilities and it would be like uh, benefits for everyone and what about free lunch uh, definitely there is no free lunch because society has to give up to this saving instead of consuming it so maybe they have like this extra saving these extra dollars and they are not going to consume them they're going to put away them so this would be the cost of saving not using the money now okay that's the case so the next point suppose that when everyone wakes up tomorrow they discover that the government has given them an additional amount of money equal to the amount of they already had which could be great for example in my case i have zero and tomorrow i will have zero again it would be great explain what effect this doubling of the money supply will likely have on the following a the total amount spent in goods and services so 
uh, in general we can say that people will spend the double in these goods and services but actually we have to take into consideration there is some part that maybe they will put away they will save okay but in general we can say that people will spend double and in my country people spend three times but it is not a case but sometimes for example here when people receive two dollars they 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 spend three sometimes like our culture but in general if we are talking about rational people we are saying the we are uh, spending the double okay next part says the quantity of goods and services purchased if price are sticky so in general we can say we are thinking about this framework we can say that people buy the double in terms of goods and services but taking account some considerations because maybe for example we are talking about laptop maybe you will want to buy two laptops maybe you will buy one laptop of better quality or if you already have uh, like your your food so for example your transportation maybe you not don't go by bus to your to your job or maybe you go by taxi but in general we can say in terms of this answer in terms of this chapter we can say that the quantity they're going to be the double but the price of goods and services if prices are can adjust so if prices can adjust it will be immediately they're going to be the double so if I have the milk one dollar so the milk is going to be two dollars immediately because people they have double in general everyone has double of their income so that will be the, the case last case the last question imagine that you are a policymaker trying to decide whether to reduce the rate of inflation to make an intelligent decision what would you need to know about inflation, employment, and trade off between them. So we first, as a policymaker, we we must know that there is an inverse relation between them. So when we have like higher inflation, we have less unemployment, and in opposite case, when we have like uh, high infl uh, low inflation, we have high unemployment. I did it. I said the same again. So it will be like when there is high uh, inflation low unemployment okay so imagine more money in the economy as a previous exercise so everyone wakes up with the double of the income so the prices they're going to be the double because they can fix so in the short run as the prices they are double we need uh, because there is more profits so we need uh, more workers because we have to supply we have to like be able to supply all these uh, cover all these demand so in the short run we need more workers so it will be the unemployment they're going to decrease but theory and data says that in the future they just adjust so the price they're going to adjust and there will not be a decrease in unemployment now imagine the other case there is a decrease in prices so when we have the prices decreasing so we don't have the same like profitability of in the enterprises so we don't need to produce the same so we just laid off workers so this is basically what we need to know about this duality against inflation and unemployment so that's pretty much the, the exercises I know that they are kind of subtle Subtle, but in the next exercises, which is more mathematics, I think they're going to be more objective. I guess that you grasp the idea of the first chapter of Gregory Mankiw. And thanks so much, and great success with economics. See you the next video. Bye bye.